These are the worst two banks in American history. Stay away from them. So where you keep your money in 2023 is gonna make a huge difference. And I wanted to make this video to talk about these two banks that have just been taking advantage of consumers for close to a decade almost, okay? And the CFPB has been going after them wholeheartedly and it's really gotten out of control with the fees, opening up accounts in people's names. I mean, so many fraudulent activities coming from a financial institution. So it's really important that you know where you keep your money at and that your money is working for you. If these banks are doing nothing for you and you're they're in the news for all these types of crazy things, why are you banking with them? Put your money in a bank account that is gonna work for you and your money is gonna actually matter to that bank. I talk about credit unions all the time and I've talked about other banks also. So make sure you go watch those videos because I'm gonna cover everything about banking in 2023 so people can really understand that where you put your money at really matters because it's gonna determine your lending for credit cards, auto loans, mortgages, personal loans. Everything in your life is gonna be tied to where you keep your money at. So let's get into it. Now, I have no special ties or any you know, animosity towards these banks. Um, I just want you to be aware of where to put your money at. And it's very important to understand that these banks are being charged with major huge accusations and then they're forced into settlement that are billions of dollars, okay? Um, because it's affecting a lot of Americans because Americans weren't aware that these banks were doing all this fraudulent activity. So the first one on the list is gonna be Bank of America. You need to get out of Bank of America for your personal and your business because they also have been coming up in the news as of recently, but they've had a lot of issues in the past where they were opening up accounts for other people in, in their name that people were not aware of. Same thing happened with the other one that's on the list. So it's not an uncommon thing when these people get caught, I mean, sorry, these banks get caught, but the fact that they're not working for you is a really big deal. And the fact that they're settling, they know they've been caught. They know they've been caught, they're in the news, everybody knows about it. So stop putting your money in these massive banks like Bank of America that aren't gonna do anything for you. You wanna bank with somebody that has going to, sorry, that is going to use your banking relationship also attached with your credit score. A lot of these big banks like Bank of America won't do anything for you. You can have a million dollars in their bank account, but if you don't have good credit, <laughs> you ain't getting nothing. Which, I mean, I get it, but at the same time, why would you wanna keep all your money in a bank that's not doing anything for you, especially as a business owner? I cannot stress that enough as a business owner, if this bank is not doing anything for you, why keep your money there? Now, one of the biggest articles that a lot of people don't talk about with Bank of America is this massive issue with Zelle. So they, I don't i don't know if they created Zelle. I don't know where Zelle came from, okay? Um, but this peer-to-peer -peer money transferring service of Zelle, uh, I know how it works, but I don't know who created it, okay? So I'll give you full disclosure there. But Bank of America has been adding it as a feature into their app. So they're making you feel like it's safe, right? You can use this, it's gonna be safe because it's coming directly out of your bank account, okay? Now, what Bank of America did not disclose to all of their users and their um, members is that if you pull a transaction through there, it's coming directly out of your bank account and now these people have easier access to your bank account because guess what? It's connected to your bank account. So. If something fraudulent happens, someone gets a hold of your Zelle account, they can just wipe out your whole account. That is a huge problem. And this is why there's a massive class action lawsuit against Bank of America with Zelle. Um, I think there's two of them that are completely separated. So um, if you were involved in that, if you had any fraudulent activity that happened and somebody stole some money out of your Zelle account, which is your bank account, then you need to you know Google um, Zelle class action because it's, it's literally out there and there are um, legal representation out there for this. There's law firms that are taking care of this um, specific situation, okay? Um, but with Bank of America, the problem that happened here was not just the fact of all these fraudulent activities that hit people's bank accounts, the fact that people told them and had real reports 
that this was fraudulent. It wasn't them. Their money was taken out of their bank accounts. And Bank of America did absolutely nothing about it. Okay? This is a huge problem. Because if someone steals money in your bank account and you have proof, like it, it was stolen fraudulently, then um, why would you not give me my money back? This is a huge problem. And this is why you have to be careful who you bank with. And this is why Bank of America also makes the list because of this massive lawsuit with Zelle that they're pushing on to consumers. So I would highly suggest that you do not connect your Zelle to your bank account, okay? Um, disconnect it if it's connected because this has been an ongoing issue and Bank of America has done nothing and this is why there is a class action lawsuit right now against it for this reason. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. That way you hear every time that we go live or we drop a video, okay? Now, if you're looking to work on your credit, we do offer full service credit repair services and we offer the most advanced DIY program in the industry. You can find it in the description. And don't forget, hit that bell notification so whenever we go live, you're gonna hear about it. Whenever we drop new content, you're going to be the first to hear about it because you just never know when I'm going to go live. And don't forget, last part's the most important. All right, so we covered Bank of America. Everyone knows that they're not doing a great job right now, okay? So let's just leave it at that. The next one on the list, this one has been just doing thing after thing after thing, fraudulent activities, doing crazy situations with people's bank accounts. It has been nonstop since 2020. Let's get into it and talk about all the things that Wells Fargo is number one for the worst bank in American history. So in 2020, so exactly February of 2020 is when the U.S. Department of Justice went after Wells Fargo. They wound up having to pay out $3 billion, which is insane, okay? Because they were creating accounts in other people's in their in their customers names so they were open up checking savings and credit cards more than anything and customers had no earthly idea that these accounts even existed for whatever reason people started to find out i mean it's kind of inevitable right unless they weren't reporting it to the credit bureaus but it, it was everywhere it was a big thing that started at the very top because they were trying to hit sales they were trying to get get all these sign up bonuses for all these credit cards. So every time that they, they got somebody to sign up for a credit card, these employees were getting kicked back for every single sign up. So they were basically teaching all their employees how to make all these fraudulent accounts. They're like, oh, don't worry about it. Nobody's ever gonna notice. Oh, somebody noticed, and then the government found out. You would have thought they learned their lesson after that $3 billion. Nah, that's not how it is. You know, once once they found all of this, you better believe that the U.S. government went digging for more. Because if there was this level of deceitful acts and, and you know, mishandling of accounts, there had to be more, of course, right? So on September of 2021, the cookie crumbled some more. Manhattan U.S. attorney announces a $72.6 million settlement a fraud lawsuit against Wells Fargo Bank for overcharging foreign exchange customers over seven years. Let that sink in. For seven years, they were overcharging their clients. And did these people even notice? Probably. Some of them, probably not. So it went on for this long. So another deceitful thing that, that Wells Fargo got caught. Oh, believe me, it just gets better, okay? Because it didn't stop there, of course, because criminal activity just has no ending to it, I guess. So Wells Fargo Bank got sued for race discrimination in mortgage lending practices. Okay, the lawsuit was filed on April 14th in the Northern District of California states. The bank approved more white borrowers for a mortgage loan compared to black applicants in 2020. This is insane. So not only are they doing all these fraudulent things with people's accounts, overcharging people, now you got discrimination on a whole other level and they got sued for it in April 26 of 2022. That was, that was pretty recently, people. Now, you would have thought this would have all ended right here, right? <laughs> no, no, no. Why would it, okay? Because the plot just keeps on thickening. Well, 
December 21st of 2022, Wells Fargo agrees to $3.7 billion settlement with the CFPB over consumer abuses. Now, we thought that it was enough before, right? No, it definitely wasn't. They were being sued because of consumer abuses tied to mortgages, auto loans, and overdraft fees. I mean, what more could you ask for? So the crazy part about this whole story about how this all conspired was it's all about credit reporting. They were not reporting, they, sorry, they were not reporting payments for cars, mortgages, and then guess what? So those payments didn't go, go through, so then they were hitting them with overdraft fees. So on top of everything that they were doing, they did that. Now, you think that's bad. The worst part about this that happened to so many Americans is their homes got foreclosed on, their cars got repossessed. So could you imagine if you were doing business with a bank and they kept saying you weren't making any payments and then you kept getting notices. You're like, this just can't be real, right? It just can't be real. And then your car gets repossessed and then they foreclose on your home. This is why it's very important for you to understand where you keep your money at. You need a bank that's going to take care of you based on your banking relationship. These big conglom conglomerate banks are really showing us what they're made of and how they really don't care about us as consumers. And this is a huge problem because if you're going to keep your money in a bank, they're not going to take care of you and they're going to do stuff like this. You got to find a better option. And we're going to keep talking about better options, better banking relationship options and different banks that you can bank with. But you got to stay away from these two big banks right here because they are no bueno. Thank you for watching and always remember, subscribe to increase your credit score.